Hello, I'm Lizzie Christie, the Interim Lead Nurse for ADHD in Hampshire CAMS. The purpose of this e-learning package is to support those working with young people who may be considering ADHD as a possible way to understand a child's presentation. This e-learning is for those with little or no experience of ADHD or mental health conditions. The aim of this e-learning is to help those working with children in different settings to be curious about the presentations that children present with and wonder if there may be a link with ADHD. To provide some strategies that may support the management of those behaviours and to consider what might be useful next steps. The positive impact of early identification is of benefit not only to the child but also to their families, schools and the wider context in which they exist. Early identification of ADHD means that the right support and treatment can be provided. It's important to note that intervention can be used prior to a child having a diagnosis. The identification early is of benefit not only to the child, but also to their family and friends and in shaping their school experience and how they manage the demands of daily life. ADHD affects children in a variety of ways, but specifically it's associated with three core areas, inattention, hyperactivity and impulsivity. It is, however, helpful to know that not all children will present with difficulties in all three areas and that strengths and difficulties may change over time. If untreated, ADHD can lead to problems with self-esteem, building and maintaining relationships, releasing full potential in education and growing independence into adulthood. Untreated, unmanaged ADHD can have an impact on a young person's mental health. Treatment is not solely about prescribing medication. Treatment can be viewed as every thoughtful, evidence-based intervention that a young person experiences. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder is a common, lifelong neurodevelopmental disorder that affects a person's ability to focus, regulate their activity levels and control their impulses. NHS England estimate that 3-5% to of children meet the diagnostic criteria for ADHD. That means in a classroom of 30 children, there are likely to be at least one or two children who have ADHD. Lifelong suggests that the diagnosis is relevant across the lifespan, including into adulthood. But again, it's worth noting that presentations may alter over time. There are three subtypes of ADHD, a combined presentation, a predominantly inattentive presentation, and a predominantly hyperactive, impulsive presentation. The introduction of subtypes into the classification of ADHD allows for the changing nature of ADHD over time. A better way to think about ADHD is that kids with ADHD are relatively breakless. They're unable to put the brakes on distraction and this can lead to inattention. They're unable to put the brakes on their inside thoughts and this leads to impulsivity. They're also unable to put the brakes on acting upon distractions or thoughts and this can lead to hyperactivity. This is a better way to think about ADHD in the real world. Symptoms of ADHD are associated with having lower levels of brain chemicals, in particular dopamine and noradrenaline. Dopamine carries signals between nerves in the brain and is linked to movement, sleep, mood, attention, learning, motivation, reward and cognition. Certain parts of the brain may be less active or smaller in children with ADHD. Noradrenaline is linked to memory, alertness and learning. These chemicals promote feelings of enjoyment and reinforcement to motivate performance. When we're deficient, it can make learning really difficult. That feeling of accomplishment we get when we learn something new is simply not there. 
Mention ADHD and you will often hear some strong opinions held by individuals within families, communities or schools of what ADHD is and what ADHD isn't. These beliefs may influence how we interact with and support young children with ADHD. The Diagnostic Statistical Manual provides the following examples of behaviours that may be observed by children with ADHD. It's important to know that these behaviours could also be true of children with no developmental difficulties, or of children with a range of other difficulties that might include developmental delay, behavioural difficulties, or indeed with another mental health condition. ADHD myths. There are many myths about ADHD. ADHD isn't real. In fact, ADHD is a recognised condition. People with ADHD just need to try harder. ADHD is not a problem of motivation or about laziness. It's due to differences in brain functions and structure. People with ADHD can't ever focus. People with ADHD can have difficulties focusing. They may also hyperfocus for long periods of time. All kids with ADHD are hyperactive. There are three types of ADHD. You may indeed be inattentive type and not be hyperactive at all. Only boys have ADHD. Girls have ADHD too, but often their presentations may not lead to as disruptive behaviours or cause for concern, and that is why boys are often referred more frequently for an assessment. ADHD is a learning disability. ADHD is not a learning disability, but may get in the way of young people accessing learning. Kids with ADHD grow out of it. ADHD is a lifelong condition, but symptoms may become less impairing over time as young people go into adulthood having learnt strategies to manage their symptoms. ADHD is a result of bad parenting. ADHD is not a result of bad parenting. ADHD is caused by brain differences. It's important to remember that young people with ADHD can have many positive traits and framing their behaviours in a strength-based way can help children to have a growth mindset and be willing to try new things without the fear of failure. Some of their strengths can include being great fun to be around, having loads of energy, being very creative and taking risks, thinking outside of the box and being really resilient. They've often experienced lots of knockbacks in life. They can be good at motivating others, making quick decisions, adapting to new situations and are often very kind and generous. It's important to remember that the behaviour you observe could be in fact normal development as a response to a life experience, such as bereavement or parent separation or bullying. This behaviour tends to be time limited and although impactful for a while, it's not significantly impairing over a period of time. However, being inattentive, restless and impulsive or a combination of these symptoms may also indicate that there are other possible explanations with ADHD being just one of them. Some of the other more common explanations include an autistic spectrum disorder, anxiety, sensory processing disorder, or early adversity. ADHD may also exist alongside other conditions. A behavior is a form of communication. What is its function? A behavior can be a way of expressing an unmet need. And a behavior can be interpreted in many different ways. How we respond to behaviour can depend on how we feel at the time, our own knowledge and skills, our relationship with the child, what training we've had, and what else is going on around us at that time. 
That's why it's important to notice behaviour changes, what triggers the behaviour, what helps to manage the behaviour and what makes it worse. How often these behaviours occur, in what settings and with whom. It is also this knowledge alongside a description of the behaviour that helps to make sense of the purpose of the behaviour and how we can then understand the behaviours in the most helpful ways. There are some other helpful e-learning packages on the Hampshire CAMS website that will give you more insight into managing behaviours. There are many other components of an ADHD presentation aside being inattentive, hyperactive or impulsive. Some of the difficulties include executive functioning difficulties. The frontal and prefrontal lobes are our CEO and our self-regulator. That means these centres consider where we come from and where we want to go, help with planning and organising. In short, they give us the skills we require to make a plan and execute it. Executive functioning varies from child to child. They may have difficulty controlling their attention or with memory or planning. It's important to identify which may be impacting on learning when thinking of useful strategies. Other difficulties may include difficulties with inhibition and this can lead to problems avoiding distractions and in general controlling responses. Things like finding it hard to wait our turn or stop before we speak or to focus and stay on task. Attention specific difficulties, staying focused, sitting still, starting a task and completing a task can also be a problem along with working memory. Often we're required to hold multiple items in our mind and for some children there's limited space to hold this information. So they may only remember the first or last part of an instruction. Information may disappear quickly from their memory unless, unless rehearsed or aided with other strategies. Many children have difficulty organising information in their memory and this can impact on many areas of their life. Being able to plan ahead is important for starting and completing a task, time management and setting goals. Children with ADHD are less likely to check any work they've done. Children with ADHD can be very sensitive in temperament. They can be empathic and appear to overreact to the smallest insignificant issue. Self-regulation is about being able to recognise and monitor tasks and de demands and respond appropriately with flexible thinking. Emotional regulation involves being able to recognise and monitor what you're thinking and feeling and how you act. Children with ADHD often don't stop to think about how they're feeling before they respond. A child should be encouraged to be aware of their reactions, to monitor themselves, their responses, and have time for self-reflection. Using a strategy to help complete a task is usually automatic. Children with ADHD don't think or use strategies in the same way. Strategies are important for accuracy and speed of completing a task also in helping us remember steps. The first steps when working with a young person whose behaviour appears out of sync with its peers or other age-related expectations is to gather your evidence. Work in partnership. Who else knows the child and can provide information? What have you noticed? Actually name the behaviour. What else is going on when the behaviour occurs? And think about the environmental setup and the relationships. Initially, be specific and factual. Consider interpretation later, otherwise you can lose some of the facts. Also think about other contributing factors, such as ill health or other stresses. Document what you are observed as soon as possible after the event. Evidence tells us that children need support to learn strategy. It often appears that for things to be better, we need to change the child. However, what's most helpful are inter interventions aimed at changing the environment and adapting other specific ADHD strategies to help and support children. For example, 
What can you do when working with a child with ADHD type difficulties? It often appears that for things to be better, we need to change the child. However, evidence tells us that the most helpful interventions are when environments are adapted or when specific ADHD interventions are used by those supporting the children. For example, what can you do when you're working with a child with ADHD type difficulties? Before speaking, try and get the child's attention. It can be difficult for a child with ADHD to try and carry on doing a task while listening to someone else speak. Getting their attention first means they can stop what they're doing and encourages them to listen to you while you're talking. Direct eye contact can be difficult with children with ADHD. Do not demand it. Think about more than the spoken word and your own facial expressions and gestures. Are they in line with what you're saying? Prepare for transitions. Use visual and auditory reminders of countdowns. Limit choices given to children with ADHD. Any more than two can be overwhelming and provide opportunities for children to get things wrong. Use expression. Try to use facial expression and gestures when speaking to your child. This emphasizes what you're saying and gives your child clues to what you mean. It also increases the child's understanding of non-verbal communication by linking words and gestures and faces. Also, try to keep your voice lively to hold the child's attention. Avoid asking too many questions at once. This can be quite overwhelming for a young person. They can feel like they're being tested. Asking questions one by one that challenge them to think rather than that need an immediate response can be less overwhelming. Repeating questions or instructions can also be helpful. Make sure you wait for the answer. Give your young person time, time to respond. It can take longer for some young people to tune into their thoughts and to give a response when communicating. Giving them more time can relieve pressure to respond so quickly and allow them time to think. Make sure you maintain eye contact and their attention while you're waiting for a reply. Use simple, repetitive language. Use the child's own words when talking to them. Model the right way to communicate. As we have discussed, ADHD presentations are highly variable and changeable over time. Evidence suggests Many girls are not put forward for an ADHD assessment as they tend to be less disruptive and may daydream, hyper-focus, be lost in an imaginary land or excel at sports. Teens may become restless internally and struggle with mental health, perhaps becoming involved in risk-taking behaviours or substance misuse. Research also states that children in care are underdiagnosed with ADHD as many difficulties are viewed through a trauma attachment-based lens. But it's worth considering that there's often more than one way to understand a child's presentation. It's important to remember that what worked well one day with a child with ADHD might not work so well the next day. Stay positive and healthy yourself. Self-care is really important to ensure that you're in the best place possible to support these children who can often be quite demanding. As an adult, caring or working with children with ADHD, it can be exhausting and challenging at times. Role model self-care. It helps to manage the demands of daily life, working with young people with often very complex presentations. Time spent active, Sports or creative arts are never not helpful. Children with ADHD can have difficulty sleeping, crave high sugar diets and have difficulties regulating their food intake and might need help and understanding with these basic needs. 
opportunities to connect with peers with like-minded interests and opportunities to feel valued and contribute are also really important for children with ADHD. Establish structure and stick to it. Children with ADHD are more likely to succeed in completing tasks if they occur in a predictable pattern and places. Your job is to create and sustain structure in their environment. Follow a routine, set a time and place for everything to help your child understand and meet expectations. Simple and predictable rituals for meals, homework, play and bedtime can be really useful. Use clocks and timers throughout the environment and allow realistic times for children to achieve and manage transition times. Simplify schedules. It's good to avoid idle time, but an ADHD child might become more distracted and overwhelmed if there are too many activities. Make sure you build in breaks. Create a quiet place, a private place of their own, not a place where you, which you might use for time out. Be organised in the environment. Colour code, use baskets, folders, hooks, visual prompts. All these will support the children to learn skills. Children need consistent rules that are easy to understand and follow, simple and clear. Write them down, hang them up. And when the child is calm and receptive, go through them. Organise systems of rewards and consequences can be helpful. Children with ADHD often receive criticism. Be on the lookout for good behaviours and praise it. A smile, a positive comment can improve attention, concentration and impulse control. An area that children themselves ask for help with is how to be a friend. Children with ADHD find social interactions difficult and their maturity is often two years behind that of peers. They may struggle to read cues, talk too much, interrupt frequently or come over as too aggressive or intense. However, they are intelligent, kind, creative, funny and will, over time, with help, figure out how to be a good friend. Children with ADHD can feel undeserving of praise and sabotage efforts by others when being praised. Using an indirect approach can be helpful. Earshotting demands on moments when the child will hear you celebrating their achievements or behaviours with another, perhaps in a different room or over the phone. This indirect approach can be really helpful. Role model the behaviours you want to see more of. Timing's important. Think about the child and when they're responsive to hearing advice, support or learning something new. Find their passion and use it as a way in for discussions. Be realistic with expectations and try to build opportunities for success rather than failure. Provide scaffolding to enable the child to do well and succeed. Start by activities that you know they can do and gradually build on these. ADH children have an array of strengths. It's good to get them to do something for others, perhaps teach a skill, help gram with IT, or teach another young person some sporting skills. When there's been evidence of difficulties with inattention, hyperactivity, or impulsivity, across more than one setting, for those children over the age of five, and where there's been little or no improvement following the following interve interventions, such as a home or school intervention, parenting support or parent training, a period of watchful waiting, or if the behaviours are leading to increased risk for the child, then it's appropriate to refer to CAMS. You will find a CAMS referral form on the Hampshire CAMS website. There are several useful community resources that you may wish to tap into. Bernardo's provide Thrive, which is a pre-diagnostic course for parents to attend. They also do ADHD specific training following a diagnosis. An early help referral can be made for family support and the Hampshire CAMS website has many useful tips. 
Sendias is an organisation who can help parents or carers manage the expectations around education. Parent carer forums in your local areas can be a great source of information and your child's school or their SENCO may also be able to provide signposting. I hope this information has provided you with ways to understand possible ADHD presentations in children and young people and given you some ways to think about and record the behaviours you observe. It's also given you some strategies for working with those experiencing difficulties and encourage you to find the strengths in those young people and celebrate them. To remind you to take care of yourselves and to know that you can make a difference. Finally, also when to consider referring to CAMS. I hope this e-learning package was of use to you. We'd really value any feedback you'd like to give us. Please use the QR code below and explore the Hampshire CAMS website for any further information. Thank you so much for listening.